everyone and welcome to my channel Alan's Cloud. In today's video we're going to do uh, another one about Chasm. Uh, in this video we're actually going to install it into a virtual machine versus into the LXC container that we did in the last video. A lot of people actually expressed concerns over the security aspects of using a privileged container and they're very right to do so. Even the administrators of or, or developers of that LXC, LXD uh, system don't trust uh, or recommend privileged container use. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to install it into a, another turnkey Linux virtual machine that we're going to download from their site. And today's install should actually go a little bit quicker because of one of the suggestions from the one of the YouTube viewers on my previous video. So uh, we're not going to actually have to edit any of the files today here either. So Please stick around if you're interested. Uh, I still think Chasm is great software and uh, it's very useful. So let's get right to it. We're going to install Chasm today. And again, we're going to be installing that into a turnkey Linux virtual machine, not an LXC container from turnkey Linux, but an actual uh, virtual machine. We're going to download an ISO from their website. We're going to put that into Proxbox and then we're actually going to install from there. And the, the reason behind using turnkey Linux, I will kind of walk you through that. Uh, they've got some, some great features with their webmin interface and with their shell in a box, which is uh, actually the interface that we're going to do our install of Chasm here today. Everything is going to be inside of a browser. You're not going to need any other external tools or software to, to make this happen. So let's get right to Firefox here. All right, so again, we're going to install Chasm. Uh, you're going to go to turnkeylinux.org and you can search for core or just uh, put a slash core on there as you can see up here in the uh, address bar. That's how you get to the page for uh, turnkey core. And uh, for version 16 right here, this is what we want. And you're going to want to download this ISO file. Um, so once you've actually downloaded that ISO file, you're going to go to wherever it is you store ISO files. Uh, and for me, again, I have a, a, a NAS machine and I just dropped it on there and, and hit refresh and, and it shows up. But, but uh, for most folks, what you're going to do is, is come to wherever you store them, if, if it's the LVM or whatnot, uh, and you're going to hit this upload button, right? And leave it on ISO. You're going to select a file from wherever, wherever you downloaded it to. Uh, and hit upload. And uh, once it's complete, it will actually show up here under the ISO section. Again, not down here in the containers. We're going to be using the turnkey core 16 buster ISO file for this installation here today. Uh, and I do have uh, here in my book stack, I've got some uh, uh, instructions that we're going to follow here today. So uh, because we're going to be doing this all in the browser, you all will get to see that uh, versus the last install where I had to do that off screen. So let's see here. Let's go to. All right. We've already grabbed the ISO file. Uh, I've got a direct link here for it. Uh, we've already put it in there. So let's go ahead and create the virtual machine. We're going to hit uh, create VM. We're going to name it. We're going to call this uh, chasm uh, TKL VM. See here, I don't think we need anything else on this page. We're going to keep the advanced checkbox as we go through here. Um, again, this here on OS, we're choosing the ISO file that we're going to be installing from. So I'm going to go here to where mine are stored. And turnkey core 16 is that one right there. Uh, leave it Linux uh, with the 5.x uh, kernel. That's fine. Hit next. We're going to leave this default. It's going to be a default graphics card. Um, uh, Vert IO SCSI is perfectly fine. The machine i440 uh, FX default CBIOS. I'm going to click the uh, QEMU agent right here. Uh, let's see here on the next one under hard disk. It defaults to um, SCSI, no cache. That's fine. I'm going to change the location of where this is going to go to a SAS drive that I have. Uh, and I'm going to um, leave the default here. Again, the minimum for Chasm is 30 gigs. So the default uh, for creating this virtual machine is 32. So that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, because mine is a SAS drive and not a SATA drive, I'm going to use SSD emulation, but your mileage may vary on that. Okay, we're going to hit next. 
here under cores. Uh, again, there's a minimum of two cores that are required. Uh, the, de the default here, uh, KVM64, is perfectly fine. We're going to hit next. We don't need any of these other options. Uh, here under the RAM, we do need 4096 as a minimum. We're going to leave it at a ballooning device. Uh, it's going to uh, use a, the Vert IO pair virtualized uh, interface for our, our networking. Um, and, um, you know, unlike on the containers where you actually set what your uh, network interface uh, information is going to be at that time, your IP address and so forth, uh, this actually is going to use DHCP at first, and, and then we're going to uh, change that IP address to what we want it to uh, and have a static IP address uh, at the uh, end of the installation. Uh, so we'll leave that the way it is. We're going to click Next, uh, and pretty much that's it. So we're going to hit Finish here. And over here on the left, you're going to see that it is making it. It's got a little lock on it. In use. And there, our name has popped up. And in, uh, under Create, it says OK. So it's uh, fairly quick because it's so small. OK. So again, this is what our hardware really looks like. We've got the CD in there, and at a certain point, we're going to have to pop that thing out once we're done with the installation. But uh, for right now, we're going to hit Start. And as soon as it says OK down here, then we're actually going to go to the console over here. I'm going to click inside and just hit Enter. We are going to install to the hard disk. It'll go through a couple of screens here while it does its thing, and then the actual um, installer for uh, Debian pops up. So we are going to use the entire disk and set up LVM. Uh, this is actually just kind of the easiest option. We're going to arrow over here and hit yes, make those changes. This one we're going to leave this set to 90%. Just hit arrow down and hit OK. All right, and uh, so as you can see here, uh, it is going to set up uh, an LVM. Um, I think that's a logical volume, essentially, and uh, it is going to give us some swap space on there. Uh, so that's good because Chasm does require that. So we're going to write these changes. We're going to arrow over and hit yes. All right, for the uh, Grub, this is the only hard drive in the system, so uh, installing it straight to it is perfectly fine. All right, so at this point, we're actually going to go back over to our hardware section and we're going to pop our disk out virtually, and then we're going to reboot the system. So we're going to click over here to hardware, and we're going to come down here to the CD and double click that and do not use any media. Hit OK, and then we're going to go back to our console screen. We're going to click inside of there, and we are going to arrow down to reboot system. All right, here we're picking our root password again. And we're going to enter it again. All right, so again, I don't use the uh, turnkey Linux uh, backup system that they have here. So we're going to skip that. And also uh, don't need an email address for system notifications. We're going to skip that. So we are going to install the security updates at this point, and that'll take a minute. All right. Uh, so what they're saying here is the kernel update uh, that they just installed requires a reboot to actually do it. So yes, we're going to hit enter and reboot once again. And I have to admit, for a virtual machine, this thing actually, um, I think due to its size, uh, is very quick. So at this point, the turnkey Linux install is complete. Um, there are a couple of more tweaks that we want to do. As you can see uh, up here, it gives us the HTTPS address for the web shell. That's a shell in a box and uh, the uh, HTTPS address here for the web min and the ports that it's on. But you can see it's also given us uh, through DHCP uh, an IP address 
uh, that I may not want to use. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're actually going to hit uh, enter and quit this. And then we are going to log in to its root and the password that we selected. And um, it may seem like it brought you to the same thing, but if you'll notice down here at the bottom, what was highlighted is the advanced menu. So this is where we're actually going to finish the uh, installation. So here under networking, I'm actually going to scroll down here or arrow down to static IP address. And we're going to put this in manually. Okay, so the IP address that I want to use is uh, 219. Uh, that the net mask there is perfectly fine. The default gateway is my gateway, uh, and and I'm going to use a um, different name server here. We're just going to use Cloudflare. I'm going to hit apply. Okay, now we're going to backspace. We're going to come down here to regional configuration. We're going to change our time zone. I'm going to go to US and I am central. Put whatever yours is. Go back. And uh, here under system settings, the last thing that we're going to change is the host name down here at the bottom. So we're going to call this Chasm EKL VM. Okay. All right. Now it's basically telling us that we need to restart at that point. And we need to do that anyway, so we are going to reboot one more time. All right, so here we are again. It is complete, and as you can tell, uh, we have uh, started to use now, because we changed it in the networking, our new IP address. And uh, for me, you know, I want it there because of the policy-based routing that I'm doing in PFSense, and I want to be able to put this virtual machine uh, once again out there inside of my uh, OpenVPN tunnel. So um, this this works out. Uh, I, I'm not going to do it with this IP address, but that's why I select a static IP address. Uh, but we're going to go to this webmin here, and uh, so we're going to just uh, open up another browser uh, tab. Here at the top, and uh, again, it's 219. So HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.0.219, and then uh, 12321 is the port that this should be sitting on. Okay, yep. Here we're going to accept the risk and continue. All right, so you can see we are actually on it. Now we're going to log in with root and our username that we set up when we created the virtual machine. We're going to take a look at the turnkey Linux webmin. The web administration here is, is uh, I think, pretty slick. Um, you know, you have a dashboard here if you want that'll show you all the metrics of, of uh, you know, the memory that's in use, the disk space, um, you know, good, good graphs. Uh, but the webmin portion here, under the, the system piece, if you want to, um, you know, boot up or shut down this virtual machine and, and not just, you know, kill it, uh, you come and uh, select boot up and shut down, scroll all the way down here to the bottom, and then you've got an actual shutdown or reboot system. Um, you know, it, it does work if you want to go to a, um, a terminal connection and, you know, type you know, shut down now after you've logged in, that works as well. And that's a, that's a good way of shutting things down securely. Uh, so under the, the servers here, you can see the two things that it's running. It does have SSH open uh, and it has a, a postfix mail server. Uh, we're not actually using that one though. Uh, here under the tools, you do have a file manager so that you can uh, change, edit, uh, upload, and download uh, any of the uh, files inside of this virtual machine, so that's actually pretty handy. Um, under networking, you uh, already have fail to ban installed and up and running in, in this configuration, as well as a firewall. Um, the network configuration, again, we already took care of that in the install process, 
But if you ever needed to change that, uh, it's actually split up into three different spots here. So the network interfaces here is where you'd have to uh, click into the network uh, interface name to change the IP address. Uh, and then you'd actually have to go back here to put in your gateway information. And then finally under the DNS is, is where you would put that. So, and then, you know, once you've done all those and saved it and uh, you probably reboot the machine and then have to log back in. Uh, but that's, um, you know, the, the webmin here, uh, it actually has a night mode if you, if you need that or want it. It does have a, sh a shell here, a terminal that you can click and it just kind of overlays. I don't know if you can see that, but this isn't the preference uh, for me, um, but it does work. If you, if you choose to use that one, I wouldn't hold it against you. Um, and then, uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to just leave this one up and running, but we're going to copy the address here up to the port information. I'm going to copy that. We're going to open another browser piece and we're going to change that last, uh, digit to a zero. And we're going to go to the shell in a box. Okay, so here we are at the, the uh, host name you can see is Chasm TKL uh, VM as I put in the host name information when we installed it. You're going to log in here as root and then put in your password. Okay, so the first things we're going to do here is we're going to do some uh, updates to make sure that, that uh, you know, we did the security updates, but we want to make sure everything's up to date here. So we're going to do an app update. And then we're going to do an apt upgrade and hit yes. All right, so under the post fix here, we are going to leave it with uh, no configuration. All right, and um, lastly, right before we're going to actually download Chasm and run the install script, uh, one of the YouTube viewers, as I had said before, pointed out, um, and I didn't even think this was an option at the time, didn't even occur to me to try this, um, simply install sudo so that we don't have to use nano and edit out all of those uh, sudo lines uh, as we had, had done before. Uh, so if I type sudo here, you'll see that uh, it is not found. So we're going to apt install sudo. All right, too easy. That <laughs> simple command saved us all of that editing time from before, so I think that's great. All right, so we are ready to actually install Chasm at this point. So I'm going to copy my wget information here. And one of the nice things about Shell in a Box, when you right-click, paste from browser, and when you paste it into this little box, you can actually edit this if you need to. So that's actually nice when you're working with the, um, you know, start lines for Docker containers. Uh, you can copy it off of the Docker Hub, put it in here, make the edits that you need to, and then when you hit OK, it, you know, actually pastes it into the, the shell. So, but ours here for this uh, purpose is, is, uh, is good. So we're just going to hit Enter. It's going to go and, and as it's done there, download the chasm install information. And now we're actually going to unzip that information right here. Paste from the browser again. Hit enter. All right. So uh, let's see here. We have to get into the chasm folder. And from this point, we're going to follow the stock installation, which is dot slash install dot sh. We are going to put the flag on there to uh, uh, which is dash l and a space and then eight four four three. Otherwise, it's going to actually install Chasm onto port four four three, which is probably in use. Uh, or if you want to put this behind a reverse proxy again, you're going to need to change this port. We're going to hit enter and hit yes on this 
And while that's running, you can look at a blooper from my cat interrupting me the last time that I tried to film the other chasm video. <laughs> Okay, so uh, for whatever reason, it does say that it's uh, failed to start the application container engine um, and it, it does exit us out of our uh, install script, but um, behind the scenes, it actually did install what it needed to. So we're just going to hit arrow up and we're going to run it one more time. And uh, because it actually installed, uh, it's, it's going to check that all the dependencies are in place. Uh, which they are, and it's going to press on with the rest of the installation at this point. And there you have it, folks. Uh, it, it, Chasm is actually installed, and again, I recommend you either copy all this information down or take a screenshot of it and, and save it to your desktop. That's uh, what I do. But uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go to the actual page and use this information to log in. When you highlight it here in the shell, you actually have to use the keyboard and select uh, control V, uh, I'm sorry, control C to copy that information. Uh, it's just one of the quirks of using shell in a box. But uh, uh, we are gonna go to HTTPS on forward slash forward slash our IP address. 19 and then uh, the actual port that we used uh, is not the uh, 443 so we're going to 8443 and at the risk there we go all right we're going to try to log in with our admin credentials we'll see v and control C and control V again. All right, so we are now logged into our uh, instance of Chasm. Um, just to show you one of the, uh, the, the things that they wanted to showcase uh, the Chasm developers. Uh, here, when you click on Chasm and, and you're inside of the uh, administrative um, account, Right here, they have a usage summary. Well, they just wanted to show you that that was an option. So here's how you turn that off. Uh, so you come down here to groups. You're gonna actually take a look at view for administrators. And down here at the very bottom under this section of here of group settings, this is the usage limit. And again, they were just trying to showcase that it actually works. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, don't want a two hour limit for the time frame of chasms that you can use under that account, you're just gonna go ahead and delete that. And uh, you know, I've, I've talked to some uh, one of the developers, Justin, and he said that uh, in a future version, they will probably pull that out. So when we go back to Chasm, there you go. The time limit is removed, uh, but we can you know, set up a Tor browser, uh, a, a desktop, Firefox. Uh, let's just do Chrome here real quick. And it is not as snappy because I didn't put it on a solid state drive but uh, it's still pretty darn quick. And there you go. We can go to Google if we want to, or wherever. So that's it for this video. And again, this is a follow-up. We installed Chasm today into a secure, very small virtual machine that is available from Turnkey Linux, uh, just like the LXC container was a Turnkey Linux template that we used. Uh, this was actually a virtual machine from the same folks, uh, but uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, suffer from the same security flaws uh, as uh, an LXC that is being run in privileged mode, uh, which is needed in order to get it to work in that other way. Um, we're not doing that with the virtual machine. So it actually works out quite well for us. Uh, so one other thing that I want to make note of uh, when talking about those LXCs, uh, I did make a mistake in, in researching to do this video, um, I found out uh, through various means that the new version 16 of the LXC templates can actually be run 
uh, as unprivileged, but um, without any of the extra work that it, you used to do, um, you used to be able to, you know, first make it a privileged container and then, um, you know, back it up. And then when you restored it, make it, you know, um, uh, unprivileged after you'd removed a couple of files. So it was a, kind of a lengthy process, but it does work uh, unprivileged uh, right out of the box now for those version 16 uh, templates, but uh, I still couldn't get Chasm to install correctly in there. So if anybody does, I'm very interested in how you did it. So please let me know. Uh, if you found this information useful or, um, you know, want to uh, support the channel, please uh, hit, hit the like on the video and please subscribe for uh, future videos that will be coming out so that you get that notification. Thanks. Have a good one.